uh, before calling the meeting to order. Well, I'm here, but, <laughs> but, oh. All right, we will not ask you to read anything, Lori. Okay, well, I, I went in the breezeway in the garage now, so, I mean, I've been just flitting everywhere. After roll call, I'll, I'll try one more time. All right, I'm just waiting for Chaz. He was here and then he uh, disappeared. All right, we're just at 631. I know. Probably, Carolyn, we probably need you to send your uh, daughter over to Chaz's place. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll tell her. <laughs> I don't know. I think he's pretty adept <laughs> as far as the computer goes. Well, that's what she teaches, it's computers. Oh, oh, then I need her. <laughs> no, I'm the one who needs her. <laughs> Why? Lance, did you say you saw Chaz trying to connect? Uh, he was connected, and it was yeah. like connecting to audio. Okay, so he says he's trying, he's having some troubles, but he's reloading into. Right. Uh, Beth, do we have an MVP update on our agenda? Uh, well, actually... Um, there is a brief presentation about the um, MVP HMP report, and um, Adria Sampson is going to join us to um, talk about that. The, the plan is complete, um, but now it's a matter of adoption um, by the Board of Selectmen. So, so she's going to come I'm in and. on the agenda. Okay, so I would be under. Work session 3.3. Oh, I got it. All right. And you said, uh, uh, Beth, that Chaz basically is like trying to reconnect? He is. I just got another text message from him and it says, I'm heading in. What does that mean? Hold on. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, uh, well, I just saw him there. Yep, he's coming back. Okay, great. Yeah, I would hope he's not heading into town hall or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Um, so I'm connecting from my phone. I'm trying to find it again. There we go. Great. Any luck yet? I'm going to have to bow out for a minute. Okay. We gain one and we lose two. <laughs> I just know. <laughs> and I just dropped my pen. Where is it? Oh, my money. Oh, I need my pen. Where are you? Oh, <sighs> Hi, Lance. Hi, Carol. Hi, good evening. Hi, Kim. Uh, okay, there it is. Okay, I'm back. All right. Um, Are you ready? Yes, let's go. I see everyone. So um, it's 635, so I'd like to call the meeting to order. So, uh, roll call. Um, do we have Carol? Yes, Carol Hofsis. Lori? Laura Schifrin here. Carolyn? Yes. Chaz? Chaz Sexton Duranian. And Lance is here. Uh, 1.2 Chairman's Additions or Deletions. Um, I have one addition, and that is the shared streets and spaces, which um, I will put underneath in our work session of 3.11. All right? Okay. Oh, and we have Ann Gagnon with us. What a pleasure. Um, all right. Um, hi, Ann. All 
right. So um, let me just jump right in to get some folks out of here. Um, first of all, Kim, um, do you want to give us an update on the uh, master plan committee so we don't waste your entire evening? Thank you so much. Um, so as, as you know, one of the things that we did um, most recently is um, send along some of the information for the anticipation of number of maps that we might need. Um, at a recent meeting, Chaz had mentioned uh, using MRPC, um, thought that there might be some um, unexpended funds there, but that thought going through the GLTA grant would be a, a better um, way to do that because those other hours were for, I wanna say the assessor's office. Um, so we, we went and asked for our, um, some maps. And then one of the things that we noticed is that um, different places, there's different numbers that are used. So we wanted to be able to get some time with MRPC to make sure that we're using all the correct numbers. And then there was a few points um, from the former DLTA grant that we didn't have um, the final information on. Um, so we wanted to be able to review, review that with them. Um, you know, and just have uh, availability for any questions that might come up. Um, so that was the DLT grant. So I'm glad that Beth was able to join us on our meeting, um, even though the turnaround was really short for her, um, she was able to get that going. Um, right now, everyone is um, sort of cross-checking the different drafts and information that we've had. So if someone wrote um, or contributed to one chapter, someone else is reading that to read it with a kind of a new fresh eye saying, you know, this is what's in there, this is what was in the survey, this is what was in the listening sessions. Um, just giving that opportunity um, to see where someone else might see a gap from our master plan committee um, with all the volumes of information that we have um, received. Um, there's probably, Two meetings, I think, that we'll need to devote to going over those to get the input from each of the folks. Now I'm saying I'm guessing that um, if one takes longer than the other, you know, I can't predict that without getting the feedback from folks. Um, we do have our next meeting scheduled for the 17th, and we'll continue to meet, um, you know, every few weeks thereafter. And I think. That's probably the big global update um, on how that we're working it. And right now, everything is still sort of in the, the different um, chapters, if you will, different sections not compiled yet um, as we're waiting for you know that feedback from folks on their reviews. Um, were you able to close the um, issues that you had with the consultant firm that did the um economic development plan? Um, we have not totally closed that. Uh, we, we finalized our um, information that we wanted clarified. I did um, write to them. They wrote back very quickly and we're just finding a date where we could meet to review all of those. Okay, and then Beth, correct me if I'm wrong, but we also included in our budget submission additional um, service, I mean, additional funds for MRPC services to do mapping. The GIS part, yeah. Okay. I'm going to so, double that, but yeah, I think that was in there. So, so just so you're aware, Kim, that we did allocate some, some money there should we need it. Okay, so separate from the DLTA? Yes. Yep. Okay. okay. Yes. Can, thank you, sir. Um, Kim, I just wanted to let you know that I, I collaborated with Beth. <clears throat> I actually wrote the um, the DLTA um, grant to that has been approved by the selectmen. Uh, in that, I asked for 12 maps, and I also asked for approximately uh, 34 hours. And the 34 okay. hours is going to go over the chapters um, that, that you guys were discussing so that you can map the, or not map, but get the, um, the narrative to, to match the map. And the maps need to be all the same. So that should, um, you know, 
MRP. Right. It's in their hands right now. Um, I wanted yeah. to jump in and, and like I said, I told you that I'd be able to, to help you out with that. I want you guys to focus on the plan. Let me take care of the maps and, and get the grant taken care of and all of that. Yeah, that was super helpful um, for you to do that. Thanks. And that matches exactly basically um, what I had sent to Bath of what we needed for the technical assistance. So, yep. yep. Um, is there anything that you need our help with, Kim? As of right now, I can't think of anything um, off the top of my head. I know, Beth, you've been able to sit in on a meeting, and Chaz, you as well. If there's something that you've heard that triggered a thought in you um, beyond the map, um, love to hear it, um, you know, and get that feedback. But what I would probably defer to is putting that on um, as an agenda item. We have enough time. Um, to do that for our next meeting and ask everyone what else they're thinking might be out there. That way there, I'm not answering totally on, you know, behalf of the group because we haven't asked that specifically in a bit. Okay. And then also, Kim, could you, when you have some time before our next planning board meeting, put together by schedule? Do you want, I didn't hear the last part. You wanted a what? Plans. Sort of a revised schedule on what okay. the master plan um, development. Yes, I can give you that. When is your next meeting? Uh, two weeks from today. Okay, so that will be after our next meeting, which works perfectly. Yep. Okay, super. Does anyone else have any questions for Kim? Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kim. All right, thanks everyone. Have a good rest of your meeting. Okay, thanks. Um, all right, so um, has everyone had a chance to review the minutes of January the 25th? And if so, are there any modifications? This is where Lori's going to be encumbered without her glasses. I didn't have any issues with it. I didn't either. Um, could I have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. How do you vote, Carol? Yes. Geraldine? Yes. Chaz? Yes. Lori? Is she looking for her glasses? She's probably looking for her glasses. <laughs> um, and, but we're going to say Lance, yes, and um, record Lori as abstaining. Okay. <laughs> Comes right back in. All right. Um, have to wait uh, like a minute for our 645 public hearing. <laughs> Yeah. I did check the budget that we submitted and see that line item for specifically GIS mapping, but I remember us talking about it. Yeah. So we did update it. Um, definitely update it. Mac, we're going to do dinner, honey. It's a file if you want to look. <clears throat> um, I, I couldn't hear you, Beth. Yeah, I'm not seeing a line on. All right, but, uh, can uh, you mute? No, I don't have anything for you. So we didn't make a full dinner, okay? I can't hear anything. Um, Hartley, are you there? <laughs> Should you ask Emmy to uh, mute? I think I'm not mute. Yeah, I know. Is it, is, who? There you go. Is it? Okay, we're quiet again. All right, Beth, I couldn't hear anything you said. I just reviewed the proposed budget, and it's not actually in there. I know we talked about it during our planning, but it's not. Um, there is uh, 5,000 for digitization that was requested. Okay. So, um, we can come back and look at that though. Okay. So if, if you get any um, 
So we may have an uh, opportunity to add it later. That's what I mean. Yeah. Okay. If you can just put that on the uh, add it later, we, you know, we may not need it. We probably won't, but anyway, all right. Um, it's six forty-five, So it's actually six forty-six. So I'd like to uh, reconvene the public hearing on the age restricted residential development and zoning bylaw amendment. Um, I have not, I mean, I, I've had a terrible, terrible two weeks and um, I haven't had a chance to dig into it, but um, Adam has um, basically um, offered to go ahead and make some amendments, what we currently have to make it more age restricted. And I'm inclined to take him up on that offer. Um, I agree, Lance, yeah. Lord, I, I agree with that, um, but um, I'm puzzled by it at the same time because I thought he was the one that said we shouldn't be that restrictive because it could be considered discriminatory. Did I miss that or did I interpret it wrong or hear it wrong? You heard it correct, but apparently he can do some attorney things that um, make it so it's not discriminatory, but does provide some age discrimination, excuse me, some, some age restriction in it. Is that correct, Beth? Yes, he, at the last public hearing, it should be in the minutes. I think that he had um, he had offered to make the. Well, what happened was um, in the response to town council's comments, um, MRPC amended the zoning bylaw to move the obligation of age restriction and basically make it based on design, if you will, rather than obligate. Uh, the age restriction um, and town council at the last public hearing um, had no problem with the uh, amendment, but the board still, I think, um, I, and I can't speak for all of you, but I don't think there was a definitive um, or a collective thought on which direction you wanted to go. Um, so the public hearing was continued to tonight and um, the board needs to consider which direction we want to go fundamentally. Jazz. Um, I think from my understanding um, and the fact that I've been working on other things with housing on this, um, it was our language in the way in which we were using language on one section um, that he wanted to make sure that the language is, is congruent through the whole document. And I think that's what he's talking about. Um, that if we don't use certain terminology and make sure that the language is congruent, he should be able to work the document the way we're looking at it. Well, I, I, I'm in support of, of, of having him go forward with that. Um, um, can I have a, I guess, a motion from someone saying let's uh, direct him to do so? I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll second that motion. Did I get a second? Without reading. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I seconded. Okay. How do you vote, Carol? Yes. Geraldine? Yes. Yes. Jeff? Yes. Lori? Yes. And Lance? Yes. All right. Um, I don't, does anyone else have anything else they want to discuss tonight in the um, public hearing? And if not, can I have a uh, motion to continue to um, February the, is it the 22nd, Beth? Yes. At 645? Uh, yes. Can I just ask um, for who is on the uh, call right now for attendance? Um, well, so we have all of the board members. Yeah. We have smiling Stan Dillis, who is uh, sitting next to Bad Larry's in Lunenburg. We have <laughs> we have Hartley. We have Emily, Emily, excuse me, from the recreation. We have my favorite select woman, Veronica Cal. We have Ann Gagnon and we have Emmy Hoff. Thank you. Did, did you, what was the date you said again? Just wanted to. 
Second. The 22nd of February. Yep. Okay. Six, five. Okay. Thank you. Um, do I have a second to continue? Second. Second. All right. Carol, how do you vote? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Jazz? Yes. Lori? Yes. And Lance, yes. All right. Um, Adria? Yes. How, hello. How long is your update? Uh, we can keep it quick. We've got a couple of slides, but we can fly right through them. All right. So do you think you can have it done before 7.15? Oh, I think I absolutely could. <laughs> okay. We have our next public hearing, hearing at 7.15, and I just thought that we don't want to destroy your entire evening so that you can get through that unless there's any objections from any of the board that we're just going to jump to item 3.3 towns and HMP MVP report, board of selectmen, approval process, and sort of an update. I'm okay with that. Yep. Okay. That sounds fantastic. Can you see my shared screen? We can. Yes. Wonderful. All right. Well, I am here to present an update on the status of the town's combined hazard mitigation and municipal vulnerability preparedness plan. I'm very pleased to say that this has been approved by MEMA and FEMA pending adoption by the uh, Board of Selectmen. So the presentation here is just a couple of highlights from the overall planning process. As a kind of reminder, I know some of you have already seen this material, um, but I'll just dive right in. Uh, to say that the town combined these two planning processes, HMP with FEMA, MVP with the state, as a way of looking at both historic hazards and future climate change. As part of the process, we covered uh, very specific climate data about what the town can expect moving forward. But suffice to say, we're expecting more uh, more storms, more intense storms, more frequent storms. So that includes increased precipitation, rising temperatures, and extreme winter weather. Very timely these days. I hope everyone's doing okay with all the snow. <laughs> So the MVP process is really a two-part process. The first part is the planning grant, and the second part is the action grant. So the planning grant is to really take a look at all the climate hazards, figure out which, one, which ones are uh, the most critical concern for the town, identify your local vulnerabilities and strengths, and then as a community, start to develop some ideas for action items that can help the town prepare for these climate hazards and be more resilient. Once you complete that process, you are MVP designated. So the town is already MVP designated, which makes you eligible to apply for the MVP action grant, which funds the, the implementation of the action items that you identified. So that's really the great thing about this program is that it doesn't end at the planning phase. It goes all the way through to implementation. And the action grant can fund a lot, all the way from assessments to redesigns and retrofits. So you can look specifically at flooding, extreme heat, drought. The key thing is that you have to have creative community engagement strategies. You have to include nature-based solutions, and you must explain uh, how the project will benefit vulnerable populations in your community. Those are really three key points of MVP. So a couple of reminders about the project. We worked with the core team of municipal staff. We had a series of three community resilience building webinars, which were invitation only. We did a series of interviews with local experts. We had a public listening session, which was open to everyone. Uh, and now we've gone through the review process of the final report, which, like I said, has been approved by MEMA and FEMA. So I wanted to just quickly touch on some of the highlights of the action items that came out of this process. There were many, so we thought we would just pull a couple of um, examples related to three main categories in the MVP process, and that's infrastructure, community, and the environment. So I know we're running through this quickly here, so I might just touch on a couple of uh, key ones. Um, we did hear a lot of interest in, I'm going to pick out a bullet here, studying well floor levels compared to the floodplain information and getting additional generators. We also heard about assessing the water supply during drought through aquifer studies. Um, and this uh, concern about water supply came up a lot throughout the process. So we're going to see repeated interest in those kinds of action items. A couple of highlights about environmental priorities and some action items that came out of that. 
um, included studying options for protecting aquifers and the town's water supply again, uh, including options for regulations, waivers, zoning, low impact development, um, and more. And then a couple of action items related to society. Um, there was really a lot here, everything from reaching residents who are at risk of isolation to providing language support, uh, translation, um, providing additional training for municipal staff, making sure that municipal facilities have generators. Um, so really a lot of really great creative uh, brainstorming around these topics and the full list of action items that was developed is in the final report. Another thing that I wanted to highlight here was just a little bit of information on a public survey that we shared. Um, we wanted to get input from all of our stakeholders, our local experts, and the public on what these action items can include. Um, so we did ask the public, rank your priorities from highest to low. What do you want to see uh, the town invest in? And we did see interest in conducting a vulnerability assessment, um, looking at impacts on flooding to the water supply. Um, um, and protecting private and public wells. So a couple of quick next steps here to wrap things up. Uh, so the next step of the final report to get it approved is that we do need the Board of Selectmen to sign a certificate of adoption. We will then send that to FEMA. They will share a formal approval letter. We'll update the report with these signed uh, final forms, and then we'll send the report back to FEMA and to EEA, which is the granting agency, and they'll post the final report on the MVP planning website. Um, so that will wrap up the planning section. And then the other step of this process, of course, is the action grant. Um, Townsend did apply for the action grant in the last round. We heard very positive feedback from the MVP regional coordinator, uh, who said that the application was very competitive, although it ultimately was not funded. We were only three points away from the threshold for funding. Uh, so it sounds like we got some you know, very specific recommendations on how to tighten up that application. And it sounds like the town will be in a good position uh, to move forward with the next round of funding, which will be open this spring. So I think that wraps up all of the points that I wanted to hit on, uh, unless you want to add anything, Beth? You're on mute, Beth. Uh, yes, I would just add that um, we have a um, appointment with the Board of Selectmen for the final approval on um, February 16th. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Adria. Does anyone have any questions? So are we going to be, uh, is Adria going to be there to help us present to the Board of Selectmen? I would be happy to join that call. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I will be there. <laughs> so I have, a qu I have a question for you. I'm, I'm Dave Vichon. I'm the superintendent for the Townsend Water Department. Do you need anything from me? So um, the next step in the MVP action grant is to submit an expression of interest. Um, and I believe you may possibly have been coordinating with Beth on that. Um, is that true, Beth? Uh, David uh, did submit an ELI. Um, I just spoke with him today about it. I wasn't aware that it was going to be submitted. So um, I just found out about it. So we haven't really had any coordination. So. Well, um, this is really the perfect time to be talking about that action grant. Um, the EOI is really just a formalization of what has happened in previous rounds where towns have reached out to their regional coordinator and said, hey, we've got this idea for a grant application. Can we talk it through with you, get your recommendations? The key thing about that is that once the, the state does release the RFP for this grant, um, the regional coordinators can't give feedback on projects at that point. Um, so now they're just formalizing this through an official EOI. Um, and I think that will be a good opportunity to touch base with the regional coordinator, coordinator again, who has been looped into the process, is aware of the project idea, um, and just make sure that we're sort of capturing the interests of all the stakeholders involved and um, really strengthening the application to hit, hit on the key points that um, EEA does like to see in this grant proposals. Well, do you, you want to know what we're, we're, we're going forward with a, with a ten, a ten year, our first 10 year plan? Um, it may help you. Um, we are starting to drill a new well in March. And 
that well is going to be 82 feet down on Main Street. Right now, it's a tubular well field that covers about five to six acres. And we're shifting it 400 feet away. And there's going to be a building that's 10 by 10. And that's the entire footprint. And the, the old well system is going to get taken out. All those, that well field is only about 10 to 12 feet deep. And it's in the middle of a wetlands because for water. So that takes care of your environmental. It's also going to supply, it also is going to be down to bedrock, which for climate change, it's going to almost be negligible for if the water table drops. So it's going to protect the, the, the entire end of the town. And it's also going to give us 600 gallons per minute instead of 200. That, that's phase one. Phase two is ex expanding the water system to the southeast by looping the um, Witches Brook neighborhood with Emory Street, which right now, 80% of our water go comes from Witches Brook and out to Main Street, all through an eight inch pipe. And if that breaks, we, lo we lose 80% of our water. So we're gonna loop it in the back to Emory Street we're gonna pick up 64 customers who are also having problems with arsenic because that end of the town has high arsenic levels and they actually have have um, machinery to reduce the arsenic in their own water. So that, that's that's phase two and phase three is, is um, exp ex putting a tank in up on Lunenburg Road and expanding the town up that way. And phase four is going on the other opposite end of the town, up off of Wallace Hill, and putting another tank in to take care of that end of town. So for the people who are vulnerable, there's a lot of people in town whose wells struggle, and they struggle in climate change, we'll be able to supply with water. And, we'll have, and by doing Main Street, that's the first phase of increasing the water, so we can be able to do that. It certainly sounds like a very comprehensive project. Just for my own clarity, is this um, the four phases? Is this something you've already identified funding for? Are you thinking about the MVP Action Grant? Are you thinking about other sources it, like the FEMA the MVP grant? Action Grant would, would help speed it up. I will but say it. It's a, it's a twenty. It's a overall. It's a twenty year plan. Well, like I said, it sounds very comprehensive. I will say the MVP Action Grant has historically um, been reluctant to fund infrastructural projects, even though that is included as one criteria that is technically eligible, um, because more and more communities in Massachusetts have become MVP designated as they finish the planning phase, um, the grant program has become more and more competitive. So EEA does tend to fund projects that um, are very, very heavy on the nature-based solutions, things which is, like- Which would be the first phase, which is the well. It, you're, you're going from, from five acres of land used to 100 square feet. We have, and that sounds great. We have um, tried to make that connection with EA and other proposals, and found that you know when they see the mention of of infrastructure, even when we make the link to wetlands, like you said, or um, other connections to the environment, um, they sort of get stuck on this infrastructure part and and are not always able to get past it. Um, so it would be good to continue the conversation, um, take a look at your project that you're working on, maybe take a look at the previous action grant that was submitted, um, and see where we can find synergies and, and how we can uh, make this the strongest action grant that, uh, that we possibly can. The other thing I can say is that the MVP HMP report that was recently completed includes an entire chapter, it's chapter seven, on potential funding sources. Um, and we've linked those to the specific action items that were identified in the process, but we also included an entire table of possible state and federal grants that can fund many different kinds of resiliency actions, including ones that are really focused on infrastructure. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you so much for the update, Adrian, all the hard work that you guys have been doing. It's been a wonderful process with a lot of stakeholders and a big shout out to Beth for all of her leadership and thanks to everyone who's been involved. Okay, thank you.
right. with that, um, um, why don't we move on? We've gotten 3.1 done, which was the Townsend Master Plan update. Um, Beth, uh, update on our uh, annual report. I'm sorry to report, the report is not ready, <laughs> but it will be next time. <laughs> I'll email it to you as soon as it's done. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, 3.3, um, Adria had already provided our MVP re uh, report and Beth has indicated that it's been scheduled with the Board of Selectmen. Um, 3.4, um, draft scenic roads bylaw proposal. Um, I have not been able to do anything, but I will commit to have something to the board prior to the next meeting um, because we have, uh, um, we have to get stuff into the warrant by um, the end of the month. So um, I'll get something written up and distributed. Um, all right, update on the Townsend Chapter 43D application and warrant status update. Okay, do you want me to take that? Sure. So 43D, in the, since the last meeting, um, you know, this is brought, it's been brought to the attention of the Board of Selectmen, and I believe that um, Beth will correct me if I'm wrong, that we, well, uh, she was just asking it again today if, if we could have an appointment for the next Board of Selectmen's meeting. Um, and have that on for their signature and that we want to um, have a tab as they call it or a place a placement tab I forget the term they use placeholder um, placeholder I was close <laughs> um, but you don't have your glasses on so you're I don't have my glasses on <laughs> um, uh, on the warrant article so hopefully that is in motion and I know Veronica is very well aware of this. Uh, to report on the, um, and I'm gonna try to read this or not, because I have way too many papers here. Um, the, the agreement that is for the 43D um, processing, which the four, uh, owners have to sign, and Beth has also sent an email requesting uh, an appointment with the school committee as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. first, March 1st with the school committee. March 1st, yeah. And uh, February 16th with the Board of Selectmen. So it's been confirmed. Okay, thank you. Um, so, I have the charge of getting the signatures and so the last one is that 356 Main Street. Um, as, as you know, those of you that were at the last meeting, um, none of us knew what that property was or how it got there, but Kevin Smith said that he knew who the owner was. And he did um, get me the name and phone number to reach out to him. In the meantime, I called MRPC or wrote to them, I can't remember which now, and got an answer back from Kayla as to how that happened. I don't know that she knew exactly how it happened, but that um, somebody representing, she thought, representing the seller, had brought a brochure into MRPC regarding this property. My question was, because I had found out that there's a great possibility that there's hazardous waste on the property um, under the driveway because they used to use dye, uh, ink, dye, whatever, and they had tanks for the dye in the front of the building under the hot top, or the it's under the hot top at any rate. So I wanted to put that out to them. Um, and Kayla said that in terms of the project itself, that would not prohibit it from being selected. However, once the property is selected, the applicant needs to either that or before it is selected. I'll have to find that out. They have to have a plan already in place as to everything that they're going to do with this parcel. The whole point of 
this 43D and being accepted into it is that you get to be in a um, sped up uh, permitting process. So after she told me that, I researched um, the multiple listing service to see if the commercial property was listed because at one time I do remember seeing a sign out there found nothing in MLS and Kevin couldn't remember who the realtor was that had also reached out to him, I should say, or real estate agent licensee. And um, so today I went by the property and there's no sign. So I did place a call to the owner um, and left a message for him, explained why I was calling and um, that I was trying to reach what was his agent prior. I explained the whole thing that I just explained to you. I left in a message. I've not received a call back. So um, I don't think they can consider it without the signature mm -hmm. of the owner to agree to this process. Um, it sounds, if someone is looking to develop their property it sounds like a good plan as far as being efficient for them to do that because there are certain guidelines that we would have to provide as a town and if we don't make those guidelines and deadlines they can proceed so that's where that's where i am that's the up to the minute report of meetings coming up and that fourth, fourth parcel where I am. And hopefully on the 22nd, I will, um, I'll, I'll have a report. Oh, well, yeah, I'll have a report on BOS anyway, and hopefully on this fourth parcel. Would you like to pull that out of the application, the fourth parcel? Well, I think that we'll know prior to the town meeting. Okay. You know, can I so, ask a question? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Is it for me? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, if if I heard you correctly, <clears throat> if this parcel was chosen, there will have to be plans of remediation in order for this to move forward. So. If, I mean, that would mean that they would need to do an EPA study. They would need to do some drilling. They'd need to do a lot of things at their own expense before we even move forward. Exactly. And, you know, once I heard that, I, I said to myself, <laughs> this guy isn't going to do it. Yeah. You know, because it's, um, first of all, he wants to sell it. He doesn't want to develop it, yet it. Apparently, I couldn't find it on the market right now. Um, I know that he's approached a couple of people and they're not interested. And basically because they know what it, what it was before and what could be there. Now, that doesn't mean, it depends on how much time they wanna spend too, because it doesn't mean that they can't get a grant like Brownstone, you know, for the cleanup. There are hazardous waste grants out there Mm -hmm. um, they've been mostly available and used in the western part of the state, but that doesn't mean that this might be one of them. And I think, and I remember that we were looking, or not we, but it was mentioned about the carpet place, uh, um, used to be a gas station, mm -hmm. and then carpet storage um, in the harbor. And... I think that that probably was eliminated. It was on the list, I think. And I think it probably was eliminated because the building wasn't the size, the lot wasn't the size. It had a lot of things going against it. I think the only reason why this one um, is, and I'm, uh, don't hold me to this because I've not looked at, Actually, I could probably tell you, but I think that it's because the building is huge and there's a lot of acreage. So it's a lot, it's a lot more, it, it would be something that could be developed under their guidelines or their criteria. Um, I think that's the only reason why 
it was thrown in there because it wasn't a recommendation from from us on planning anyway. Um, so well, that was my knowledge. <laughs> it was. <laughs> <My knowledge. laughs> it was. Yeah. Was that the brochure was brought into the planning board office, and I brought it to um, the administrator, and I tossed it over to. Um, oh, okay. Why did Kayla yeah. say? To oh. Kayla, that's where it came from because they they came into town hall with the brochure. I went, oh, I looked at the square footage, I looked at the acreage, and I thought of the okay. page. <laughs> All right, and so that answers your question, Chaz, as to why this one was. Okay in the thing, you know, in the pool, rather than um, the carpet place. Right. It was only purely because of the building size and the acreage. And the fact that it came to town hall with a brochure and I said, yeah, well, can let's- Can you send that to me? Can you send that to me? Be because what, what I wanted, what? I can't find it. I gave it to the administrator. I'll see if I can find them. Um, I took a photocopy of it, but I can't find it. Um, okay, if you could do that and just give me the contact information. Absolutely. I will, so, sir. Okay, because um, the, the $64,000 question is going to be, did the person who brought this the brochure in tell everything to the owner of this program before it was put in and that was this, that's why i wanted to talk to him first versus the owner yep. because if the owner doesn't know anything about it and it, or if the owner does know everything about it then okay i will pursue getting his um signature right yeah that makes okay. sense Anything okay. Else? I didn't hear you. Uh, just question: Does anyone have any other questions so that we can get to our public hearing? Well, I just <clears throat> I'd like to have this on the next agenda to keep it going. Okay. Well, well you know where I am today, so hopefully I get somewhere. Okay. And and Beth, you, can you put it on our our agenda for our next? Uh, keep it on here. Absolutely. Um, the application, um, I haven't started it yet, but there is. this is all part of the application that's going to be going into the state. So um, that's something I'm working on. Um, and uh, there also is a warrant article um, that is associated with this um, program okay. that's been submitted. I think I emailed the board the actual warrant article. And that will also be on the agenda, I believe on the 16th for the Board of Selectmen. Um, and that is what's going on with that. But I wanna finish the application after I um, uh, hear from town council. I have a couple of questions into town council about that. So next okay. meeting. All right, great. All right, then without any further ado, um, I would like to open the public hearing um, for a stormwater management permit for 59 West Meadow Road. Um, let's introduce the board members. Carol? Carol Hofsis. Geraldine. Geraldine Bazikas. Chaz. Chaz Sexton Duranian. And we have Lori. Laura Schiffrin. And we have Lance McNally. Um, so um, in this virtual world, I just basically took a screenshot of all of the people that are logged on to this um, um, meeting and sent it to Beth. Beth, do you have any questions on what I had sent you? No, thank you. It's very helpful. Okay. Um, so let me proceed with reading the um, legal ad. I'm in accordance with MGL Chapter 48, Towns and General Bylaw Chapter 85, NP DES Phase 2 Stormwater Management and Chapter 175, Article 5 Stormwater Regulations. The Planning Board will hold a virtual public hearing Monday, February the 8th, 2021 at 7.15 p.m. regarding an application received um, from Debbie, um, gosh, Debbie, how do you pronounce that? Um, is it Iodice? Yes. All right, Joseph Iodice and Deanna 
uh, Leanna Silva proposing to move uh, 109,000 square feet of material on the property at 59 West Meadow Road, map five block four lots one and zero for a restoration project. The amount of the material proposed to be dis disturbed is above the threshold of the stormwater management permit. In accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GLC 30A, Section 20, all public meetings are being conducted remotely. You may attend the virtual public hearing on Zoom, and I'm not going to read the URL or give the meeting password or by calling um, phone number here and entering the following meeting ID, da, 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 da. Materials <laughs> are available digitally on request by emailing Beth Faxon. Interesting parties are encouraged to attend. Um, and this was published in the um, Groton Herald on January the 22nd, 2021, and January the 29th, 2021. Um, so um, a couple things that um, um, I'd like to go over first is um, Stan Dillis. Um, are there any waivers that are being requested? Uh, yeah, we've requested a waiver from um Submitting drainage calculations and peer review. And I'll get into the reasons for that when I make my presentation. Okay. Um, you want to just go through your quick presentation now? Sure, sure. Um, this is on West Meadow Road. It's um, heading up towards the New Hampshire line. It's before you get to where the condos are on the right hand side. And it has a, a rather long history of being uh, of the property being intensively used. It was a, a pig farm at one time and a dumping ground. And there was uh, an excessive amount of building materials dumped there and trash and animal waste and so forth and so on. And somewhere along the line, uh, probably about 15 years ago or so, the Iodite family bought it. They had plans to develop it. Um, there was a gravel removal operation that was started without any real permits. So it's, and that had been ongoing for quite some time. About three years ago, the building inspector put a cease and desist on the operations uh, for lack of permits, first of all, and secondly, because there were some unsafe areas on the site with some very steep slopes. We got involved when uh, we were asked to kind of clean up that clean up the permitting process and get everything uh, legitimate and that's where our application originated from originally the disturbed areas were going to be restored loamed and seeded and regraded so forth and that's where the 109,000 yards of material being moved comes from since the applications um, we have had natural heritage has been involved because there's endangered species and fish and game has entered into agreement to buy the property so it changed the initial proposal somewhat after several meetings with natural the endangered species and fish and game it was decided that essentially they would like the property to just be the way it is and really have not much happen to it because it act those gravel removal areas provide uh, very good nesting habitat for some of the endangered species. So as this has morphed a little bit, it's come around to two things that, that Fish and Game would like to have happen in order for them to buy it, is the trash to get cleaned up, the remaining trash. A lot of it has already been cleaned up. And some of those unstable, un, those excessively steep slopes get regraded. So we're really only moving around some material in areas that are already disturbed and changing some of the slopes so they meet the, uh, the earth removal requirements of a two to one slope. There's no additional uh, excavation of earth on the site. There's no removal of anything from the site and there's no impervious areas being added to the site. So there'll be no There'll be no change to the stormwater patterns or characteristics at the site, but we did trip the thresholds um, to, to require a permit to be filed. So it's pretty, at this point with everything that's coming around, 
we've already have an order of conditions with the Conservation Commission to do the work because some of it's in the wetland buffer and Natural Heritage is on board with what we're doing. And I believe, I think Ian Gagnon's on the call that uh, we're meeting the wishes of the ultimate owner of the property, which will be the Commonwealth and Fish and Game. So that's really the gist of it. Uh, and it's, it's, at this point, it's become pretty simple. So I'd be happy to answer any questions anybody has. Uh, um, Stan, just a question. Are we, uh, are you guys looking at, is there any specific timeline because um, of the endangered species habitat that we need to get this done or that we have to follow to get it done before, you know, like a breeding season or anything like that? Yes. If we do it in the, in the inactive season for the turtles, which I believe ends on um, April 15th, we don't need to do anything. We fish and uh, endangered species has given us the green light to go ahead and, and work there. Okay. before April 15th. If it's after April 15th, they'll either have to be turtle protection put in place and or they'll have to wait until next next October to do the work. Okay. So if they so work in, in that season, if they work between April 15th and October 15th, it triggers a whole different level of oversight from the endangered species people. So right. they're trying to get this cleaned up now while they're still in that season so that they can convey it to the Commonwealth. Right. And that's that's what I'm trying to bring forward here right. is that there is a timeline involved and that they are tra trying to bring the land back to to a, a more natural state to make it more habitable for these species that are already there. Correct. And, and to and to um, basically to facilitate it so that fish and game it will buy it. That's one of the conditions of them buying it. OK. Any other questions from anyone? Stand. Okay, um, Chaz, could I um, impose on you to uh, read um, any mandatory report comments? Yes, <clears throat> I have, and it's not an imposition, sir. Thank you. Um, I have a mandatory referral um, that is dated uh, January nineteenth. Uh, this is from the Board of Selectmen. Um, it states, uh, Ms. Kell requested that things be done well and that if things are going to, and if things are going to be done beyond our bylaw, that there would be good reason to do it. Ms. Kell moved as stated. Mr. Miller second, unanimous vote, voted in the meeting of the Board of Selectmen held on January 19th, 2021. Um, we also received a letter from the Conservation Commission dated January 30th. Um, it is signed by Dave Hinkles. It says the Towns and Conservation Commission voted to issue an order of conditions on January 20th, 2021. Multiple parties have and or had an interest in this property. On January 29th, 2021, the Board of Select Persons acknowledged and are backing the proposed acquisition of a segment of the property by Mass Fish and Wildlife. Specific details are not available. Upon its acquisition, it is the commission's understanding the property would become a part of the state's park system these those details are being worked out between the parties involved the property has existing debris removal and some grading that is required the grading is a function of managing safety risk management issues these slopes have been historically altered many times the regrading will not generate or create adverse runoff impacts to resource areas. Sedimentation and or erosion control devices are not necessary. The property is in an HESP listed. Accordingly, it is exceptional habitat for several species of turtle. Given the anticipated transaction between the Indice Family Trust and Mass Fish and Wildlife, this office feels that a stormwater report with its associated drainage calculations should be waived. Should circumstances change, this issue can be reassessed within the next six months. Okay, is that it, Chess? Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Beth, have we received any um, um, correspondence from any in butters or concerned citizens? No. Uh, okay. Um, are there any um, abutters or concerned citizens as part of this public hearing that wish to um, make a statement or um, ask any questions? 
Yes, my name is James DeLeo. I'm an abutter and I live uphill just before the condos. Now, is this about the whole property or just a couple of pieces? Well, the, the proposal for fish and fish and wildlife, they're going to buy the whole property with the exception of a one A in our lot that's been created in the front. So the, the proposal, but the proposal to clean it up is the areas that are the that have been disturbed as the as the earth as the gravel pits. So the yeah. area that would abut you that are the fields, there's no there's no proposed work there. Uphill. Right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other um, questions? Um, are we going to be voting on waivers as well tonight? Is that what we're looking at? Um, um, you know, I I sort of like maybe jump to the chase, and if anyone has an objection to this, please let them know. But I would entertain a motion to grant a stormwater management permit you know, especially based upon what we've heard from conversation, from conservation and Stan. Um, and uh, just by granting that permit, it would uh, waive the drainage, you know, it would basically accept what has been submitted and move forward with that. Um, I make a motion that we waive the uh, peer review for drainage calculations for this property. Okay. We're going to uh, waive the drainage calculation, stormwater report, and peer review? Yes. Do I have a second? I did. Second. Okay. How do you vote, Carol? Yes. Geraldine? Yes. Chaz? Yes. Lori? Yes. And Lance is yes. Uh, I would also like to um, entertain a motion to grant a stormwater management permit. So moved. And those accept. Okay. Um, so moved. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Okay. Um, how would you vote, Carol? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Chaz? Yes. And Lance, oh, excuse me, Lori? Yes. And Lance is yes. And with that, I would also like to entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Can I just say thank you? You're welcome, Ann. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're, we're getting there, Anna. We're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> move, I move to close the public hearing. Do I have a second? Second. second. Um, Carol? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Chaz? Yes. Lori? Yes. And Lance is yes. Thank right. you very much. I think we may have set a record for a public hearing. <laughs> uh, Lance, uh, would you also uh, somebody make a motion to have you sign both the stormwater management permit and the planning board's decision? So someone make a motion to authorize Lance McNally or any other board member to sign on your behalf. So moved. <laughs> second. Second. All right, Gerilyn, second it. Carol, how do you vote? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Chaz? Yes. Lori? Yes. Lance, yes. So I guess Lance is the only one that has to come to town hall. <laughs> <laughs> I have a quick question. Uh, is the ZBA going to be um, reviewing this project um, on Wednesday? Yes. Yes, yeah, that. Yes, at 530 p.m. 530. Okay, thank you so much. And there must be a link on the website. Yes, is this Anna asking? This is Ann Gagnon, sorry. Oh, oh Ann Gagnon. Um, sorry, I, I'm on my phone. Yes, the um, agenda is posted, but I can email you the link for the ZBA meeting. Not a problem. Okay, thanks so much. You're welcome. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. All right, so let's move on to um, 3.6 safe routes to Thank school. you. Jazz, you're welcome, awesome. Stan. Thanks, Stan. Um, I am ha happy to report that we have some good movement on this. Um, 
I have, uh, not I, but uh, we have established, we're going to be meeting, <clears throat> excuse me, with Jason Webster, who is the Hawthorne Brook principal. Um, we are meeting with uh, Kate Guziak. I probably horribly pronounced that wrong. Um, she is Spalding Memorial Principal. Uh, we are also meeting with the uh, Susan Robbins, who is who has been appointed from the school committee. Uh, we're meeting on Thursday, February 25th at one o'clock. Um, it's going to be um, Rachel, who is with the Safe Routes to School, and uh, Veronica Selectman, Veronica Kell, and myself. Um, and uh, we are going to be um, kind of finalizing. They wanted to wait until after February vacation, um, but it looks like this is gonna be a good conversation. In the meantime, Beth um, has gotten us um, on the school committee. Is that right, Beth? Did you get us on that agenda? I'm still waiting for a confirmation, but I have reached out to, uh, to ask, yes. Okay, so we're waiting on that. Um, uh, uh, select Mikkel and myself um, wanted to make sure that it, if we couldn't get in touch with the principals, we did want to talk to the school committee. So um, we're definitely booked for that appointment, but we'll also see the school committee whenever. Um, but within, I'm hoping by our next meeting, I'll have much more information on moving forward. Um, we have buy-in from everybody in the town. We just need to get the principals to agree before we can start moving forward. Good job. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any questions for Chas? All right. Um, 3.7 Unified Planning Work Program Grant Townsend Walkability Study. Yeah. Uh, the walkability uh, the walkability study. Um, after talking with. Um, Chairman and Veronica Kell, uh, we did some, we did a site walk for the uh, Safe Routes to School, I'm sorry, the uh, Shared Streets and Spaces grant. Um, uh, Sherry Bean asked for a finalization of the study area and the area that was selected was from the town common down to the high school for the first phase. Um, and that is underway. So MRPC is working on co uh, gathering data that they already have. And Cherry Bean is um, basically planning on uh, organizing some activities in the spring, uh, such as site walk, you know, walking activities and, and that. So that's going on right now. In your uh, folders, if you want to look it over, that has the designated study area on it. Okay, um, 3.8. Um, well, Beth, if you just want to sort of give the update on the budget that we had worked on. Oh, yeah. Um, so basically, what kind it is in your folders if you want to look at it and ask any questions you have um there's money in there for training for board members we asked for training for cptc which is a citizens planner training collaborative um there is i don't know a hundred dollars for office supplies <laughs> what do you want to know <laughs> six hundred dollars um or printer scanner potentially, hopefully. And there's $5,000 asked for for digits, digitization of the planning board and ZBA records um, and files, because right now everything is in paper other than um, if I scan it and uh, index it in the uh, hard drive. Um, and in OneDrive. So it's a triplicate filing system right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think that it would be, you know, it would just be better for the town to have files digitized and indexed and for retrieval. And um, so there is money in the budget asked for that because that's something that you've been talking about for a while. Yep. And um, what else did they put in there? Uh, I just thought I might add that we met with um, uh, the police chief, Chief Sartell. Oh. Mm -hmm. And going to, um, he's got money put aside for the digitization of police records and is also going to arrange a uh, 
up with the Hollis Land Use Department who has digitized their records so that we can look at their system. Oh, that's right. And I did find, Lance, where we had um, put the additional request for GIS services. It's under the line item uh, professional services. So for the FY21 appropriation was 1500 The FY22 request is 3000 So it's, it's $1,500 for GIS services if, um, if, that, if it comes to that. And we need that for master plan or any other planning activity. And hopefully we can also get some done under the eight hours that is budgeted for the town as well. Yeah, that would be great. I don't know what that budget is right now or where it stands, so I don't know. All right. I, I'd like to talk about this this digitization um, because there has been for over, um, Lori, correct me if I'm wrong, we've been talking for land use, not only for um, zoning and, and planning, but also for the building department having a software system that would be able to tie into all of our areas so that we all can share information. And yeah. I think that digitization would fit very nicely into that particular package. Do mm -hmm. we know if other departments are, are, or the other boards going to be looking into this as well? Is this just to get the old records onto, onto, um, onto a hard drive? Yeah, it would be to scan all the current records um, that we have and get them in depth and organized. Right now, it just depends on whoever was sitting in the office chair as to what the system looks like. Um, right. When I came on board, I basically got a hard drive from my predecessor and had to basically look through their files on every project and and you know take whatever I needed to try to move forward with the new projects and new applications. Mm -hmm. So right now, land use is um, basically paper files, mm -hmm. and then it is indexed um, on the hard drive that I have when I started. And now I've started using OneDrive so that you can all, you know, I can share documents with board members and the public. So I think if we could, you know, have an overall digitized document control, I guess you would call it, system, where, um, you know, retrieval and filing is organized and, you know, protected, where I could take out a document for the public at a public records request or what have you, I would be able to, you know, I would, that's what I would like to be able to do. I think it's, it's really important to, to the organization, you know, and to the town. I don't know what other uh, departments are doing. Um, but I just know that in land use, it would it would really it would really behoove the town to do that, um, and it would be safe. I mean, in terms of like Lance mentioned, if town hall burned, <laughs> everything's gone. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, my 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 point is that land use. We've been talking about this for a while, but it mm -hmm. is a lot of the departments. Like for instance, when you when somebody files a a a. Um, uh, an application with you, there are certain timelines involved in it. And this, this software would, would calculate all of that. It would also allow the building department to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. so Absolutely. I think, I so think my that, intent, Chaz, would be to make it um, board-wide, if you yeah. know what I mean. Yep. yep. Um, and um, so I think the first step is to really start looking at what other towns have in place so that we, you know, we can actually go forward with something that's that's tested mm -hmm. and we can actually get references on it and see how it works and what have you that'd be fantastic may I interject here yeah. um i'll try to put myself back on um so yes for years as far as um the housing authority and town properties, but for many years before that, it was the assessor's office that wanted something like that, that the communication needed to be done from the building department, from conservation, 
from any zoning because all of those things, if changed by one of those departments, creates a different code for the assessor's office. Understood, and, yes. Okay, so yeah. yeah it's been when a I pull a building permit to, to, you know, expand my house or something, then that clearly is of interest to the assessors. Mm -hmm. And, and there's, not, there's also, if somebody pulled a permit, um, let's say for an accessory apartment, those have to be revisited in five years. Exactly. And this software will be able to allow us to say, these are the, the properties or these are the permits that need to be re, you know, re-opt on, on this yeah. particular year. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, anything else on the budget that you wanted to discuss, Beth, other than we submitted it? No, but that that digitate that is basically a start. The five thousand dollars is a start um, yeah. to, to see where we can go. Um, I, I just think it would be excellent. <clears throat> but anyway, that's that. Thank you. All right, um, we probably covered this, but um, three point nine, the DLT RSD application. Yep. Uh, Chaz mentioned the uh, request has been submitted. Uh, I I would like to ask Lori. Um, you you were at the MRPC meeting where the DLTA RSD was discussed. Did you hear anything helpful, or was it discussed at all? Um, I think there was only a brief update, and I don't think it was um, something that I really noticed. Okay, I thought um, there was a discussion. The meeting, That's fine. the meeting this past Thursday was um, it it was very quick. Okay, um, so I don't remember in, any in depth discussions going on. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I didn't attend, so I wasn't sure. I was there. <laughs> okay. Um, 3.10 Unified Planning Work Program. Oh, yeah. So, um, yes, I, I thought since the walkability and bikeability study has uh, been uh, determined, the area, the study area has been determined, um, I would like to request that the area from the common north to the public safety complex be presented as a request in this, um, this year's um, unified uh, planning work program. The solicitation memo came out January 4th from MRPC asking for, you know, requested projects. So I have talked to Brad Harris. I have talked to Sherry Beam um, about the potential of uh, that walkability study, walkability and bikeability. So I did take the liberty of grabbing. Call from North Middle East. That's not me. Call from North Middle You're there. Oh. Could you be Carolyn? I got yeah. it. Oh, okay. All right. So I, I took the liberty of just drafting a letter and I shared it with, I believe, Lance and Chaz to um, make that request. And it has to go through the Board of Selectmen. Like other, uh, like a DLTA request, or take any other action to, you know, if you guys have other ideas. I don't know that Townsend will be granted um, another study because they tend to try to spread the um, the services around to different communities. And for the fact that we have that Townsend was granted the walkability study in the first place, it may not you know, in, in this year's UPWP, it may not be included because they need to address, you know, work with other towns that haven't been serviced in the past. So I don't know if the board thinks that that's a good idea or if there are other ideas uh, for a request, but I put it out there. Well, I, I thought it I, I thought it was a great idea, and and I I want to take this opportunity to say that it's really really nice to see the other boards and committees working together on something like this. It's it's really this is how this is how the government should be working, you awesome. know. We've, 
we've got a lot of people that are involved in this and and i just say let's give them more fuel let's do whatever we need to do to keep this rolling okay so then this would be something i would uh, again have to go take forward to the board of selectmen at their next meeting um and if they bless it then um we'll i can take care of submitting it to mrpc right Okay. What, is our, what is our next step? Uh, that would be the Board of Selectmen need to approve it, to re re approve the request. So I just sent the letter to you and Lance, uh, Chaz. It hasn't gone to the whole board, but um, basically that letter, if you want to edit, change it, and let me know if there are any additions or deletions, I'll um, ask for an appointment with the board of selectmen for approval um do you want uh, the board to approve that beth sure so why don't we just have a motion that um, um the board authorizes beth to move forward with scheduling an appointment with the board of selectmen based on you know comments received from her email uh, i so move thank you i have a second second, oh, second. Thanks. all right Carol, how do you vote? Yes. Caroline? Yes. Jazz? Yes. Lori? Yes. And Lance is yes. Thank you. So, right. Beth, Beth yeah. I'll look that over and I'll send you my comments. Okay, thank you, Jazz. And also, um, sort of going back, um, I really appreciate the effort that you put into getting the DLTA grant for the uh, mapping. Oh, you're very welcome. My pleasure. Thank you, Chaz, for writing that up. <laughs> and getting that done. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, 3.11 shared streets and spaces. Yes, okay. so I believe I'm here to help with that unless others planned to also jump in. <laughs> Thanks, Adria. <laughs> Fantastic. I will start with a quick overview of the uh, grant program um, and a shout out to others on the call who are involved in this process, uh, which includes Beth and Emmy um, and Emily and many others who are not currently on the call but have been involved since day one. So I can start off by saying that MassDOT started their Shared Streets and Spaces grant program this summer um, as a way of quickly getting money to municipalities uh, in part related to the impacts of COVID. So they were trying to get money out there for quick build projects that got people outside and that helped small businesses. So they ended up funding a lot of projects that were related to things like creating spaces for outdoor dining so people could be outside um, but still socially distance. So they are now releasing a winter version of this grant program. Townsend did apply for the summer round um, and was not awarded funding. Some of the feedback from MassDOT um, said that the application was a little too focused on placemaking and also that it seemed uh, very um, we wanted to do a lot, right? Uh, and they wanted to see projects that were very clearly quick build and could be accomplished on a short time frame. So with that feedback in mind, uh, the team working on this application has taken a look at the um, way that they're structuring the winter round. They're looking at projects related to four different categories. So that's main streets, reimagined streets, uh, shared mobility projects, um, better buses, uh, spaces. Um, and we're really focusing on this reimagined streets category. So creating safe for spaces for cyclists, for pedestrians, and up to $300,000 is available for this category. Um, and there are rolling applications that are open until February 26th. So that is the deadline that we are working towards. With that overview in mind, I'll walk you through um, some of the highlights of our application as it stands currently. We are still working on developing this. We are meeting, uh, we've been meeting on a regular basis for at least a month. We're meeting again this Friday. Uh, so it's very much in development. 
some of the key points about this application, it includes signage uh, for the common and the downtown area to get people to trails and to parking lots. It includes some uh, modifications or improvements to crosswalks. Again, we're thinking about really improving pedestrian safety here. Um, it includes bike lanes added where possible, and I can get into that in a little more detail. It includes upgrading sidewalks, um, so really focusing on these pedestrian and cycling elements. So let me walk you through some of the details of what this includes, and I'm going to start with wayfinding. So here we're really thinking about signage, and Emmy has been looking at um, the details of this as well. So once I go through the overview, feel free to jump in. Sure. Signage really includes a lot of different things here. So uh, we're thinking parking signage. We're thinking you are here signage uh, to let sort of orient people, um, you know, as soon as they get to a parking lot, where are they? Where can they go? We're thinking trail signage. We're thinking trail maps that can have QR codes so people can engage in person and get more information online. I mentioned crosswalks earlier. We're thinking of some specific locations. There's a little over a dozen locations that we've specified in our grant application. We're thinking about repainting existing crosswalks, adding any reflective elements that we can, and adding some pedestrian safety signs. I also want to mention some details of the bike lane idea. We have put together some specific locations where we'd like to add bike lanes. That includes bike lanes on both sides of the street where there is space, but it also includes bike lanes on some narrower one-way streets, and those would be contraflow bike lanes, meaning that it's one lane, but bikes can move in both directions. So we're trying to be uh, smart about the use of space here. This proposal also involves making Jeff Street one way. Um, so this would be one way from Town Hall parking lot to Route 13. Otherwise, we really can't fit a bike lane in this space. So that's a key point there. We also want to think about providing amenities for folks who are using these great new cycling and pedestrian spaces. So that might include bike racks. We've identified three places where we'd like to add bike racks. It might also include bike repair stations. Um, so this would be a great opportunity to maybe do some public education, um, especially you know some training with kids uh, so that they feel empowered to ride their bikes and know how to, to fix it if anything goes wrong. So that's really the overview I wanted to give on the program and the application itself. Um, and I'll definitely turn it over to others if they want to jump in. So hi, everybody. Um, Emmy Hoff with Recreation. Adria, thank you so much for giving us the overview. Um, wanted to step in and just give a couple of key points that we're really um, targeting and why we're really targeting this for um, for the town. And the grand idea behind this really is this, this idea of um, the outdoor assets that Townsend has and really trying to bring the community to that um, and bring the asset out to be visible to everybody and getting folks out and about. So um, with this shared streets and spaces, and this is just one of many grants that we're looking at to promote our outdoor use here in Townsend, the idea behind putting these signs up, and we're really focusing first off with um, Howard Park, Old Meeting House Park um, with Howard M. Stein um, Land Trust, the Adams Dam Trestle area, and um, Pheasant Ridge uh, are the primary ones that we're going to have signed uh, right now <clears throat> and directional signs within the center of town area. The bike lanes, same thing. The idea is to try and get flow from the, um, the Squanacook River Rail Trail throughout the whole center of town and do that safely uh, so we can get people from, again, from the schools even all the way to the center of town um, and out where our sidewalks are. So uh, we're really putting a lot of emphasis on, this on that. And same thing, bike racks so that we're not hanging them around. Um, if we really want to promote the Squanacook River Rail Trail and really promote the use of our waterways um, responsibly and our trails responsibly, we need to provide some of that equipment. So we're looking to do that. And we're really excited about this. Um, the idea for safe, um, enjoyable uh, outdoor recreation and um, use of our gorgeous town um, is really exciting for all of us, and there's quite a few of us in um, various aspects working on this right now. Uh, February 15th through 19th, which happens to be school vacation week, uh, Towns and Recreation is sponsoring five guided tours, actually, of um, our various 
park areas, I guess you could say we're doing um, three mornings and two afternoons. And those are going to be guided by uh, select woman Veronica Kell. Um, uh, let me see, conservation member Jean, Jen Eaton and um, Joan W. I can't pronounce her last name, um, but she's with Wild and Scenic uh, Stewardship and a few other uh, programs that she's going to do Howard Park for us as a, as a guide. So we're really excited about that too. And we're looking um, you know, to just continue the group support from the various boards um, and getting those questions and answers done. Signage, um, I do want to mention Jim Smith has been a huge help in uh, helping us with where we can put signs, how we can put signs out, what mass DOT needs from us um, and trying to make sure that our signs are universally used. So um, Emily, was there anything that you wanted to mention on this? No, nothing in, I'm sorry. Nothing in particular. Um, uh, you touched upon the, the collaboration and, and Chaz mentioned this earlier. This is the way, you know, uh, you know, politics and, and communities should be uh, working together, but, you know, we're, doing our best between, you know, recreation and the rail trail and the conservation commission and wild and scenic and just all working together for, you know, this common goal. So that's really, really exciting about this project. And um, we have some really great collaboration going. So I keep my fingers crossed that we get this, but I'm really looking forward to, um, you know, doing more collaboration in the future. I agree with that 100%. Did any of you guys have any questions for us about the um, the grant process or what what we're sort of looking at? No. I'm sorry, Emmy. I I having problems with my mute again. I was just asking if any of you guys had any questions because um, I know you you have all been following along. Beth has been really phenomenal in guiding us with this process as well. As well. So, was there any questions that you guys had? in the specifics or anything that you wanted to know about what we were looking at? No, nothing. Other than that, thank you so much for your efforts. Is there anything you need us to do, Em? I don't think right now, Chaz. I know, um, like I said, we've been outreaching with Beth and trust me, as we get further into this and as we start looking at those other grants, we'll be knocking on your door. Um, no, <laughs> and to get, no, again, no. that communication and cooperation is key yep. to getting this done yep. well i i definitely want you and i to to interface once we get the um um safe routes to school because those bike racks and those safety uh repair stations are all part of that as well Absolutely. And we do have a couple of things that we have mentioned within this grant, um, including the crosswalks. There's some new signage we're going to be putting up for that. Um, the bike lanes and the signage for that, that all connect as well as um, some of the um, directional signage that we have that are both at Spalding school area um, Oh, and I should mention, we're actually requesting to put one of the RRFB uh, crosswalk lights at the top Spalding crosswalk where the parking lot is that goes across Main Street. Um, we're actually looking to put one of those there. And that's the one that has the actual lights on it as well. The crosswalk people with the actual lights. Um, that is such a scary area. Um, and unfortunately, you know, the crosswalks fade so much with our lovely winters. So this will just give an extra bit of support for, again, kids and families coming from the schools to the center of our town and getting around to our areas. So those are part and parcel of what we are trying to do with getting those schools in. And, and as you guys work on that further, and Veronica obviously has all the details as well, um, we'll be able to flesh that out and keep working towards pulling that all in together. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. All right, thank you, Adria. Thanks, okay. Adria. Um, all right, so let's move on. Notices, uh, 4.1 notices from Townsend and other towns. And Chaz, I hope you saw the summary that Beth had put together. I did. <laughs> I don't know where I put it, though. Oh, <laughs> that was a special request from Chairman McNally. <laughs> um, it's under 4.0 correspondence, correct? Um, I think I emailed it to you. Uh, so let me. You did. I, did. I, I have it. In the file. Hang on, I have it somewhere here. You know, when I was logging in tonight, my system decided to do an update, so that's why I was having problems. I just re emailed it to you, Chaz, if that helps. Ooh. 
Um, okay, so notices from other towns. Um, we have from Groton ZBA, uh, it was granted a special permit for the alteration of a non conforming structure. Uh, that was lot 1129 22 um, at 333 Lost Lake Drive in Groton. So I guess they found the lake. <laughs> so it's no longer lost. Um, Groton ZBA, uh, there was a special grant. Uh, a special permit to allow the reconstruction of a non-conforming structure on a non-conforming lot, lot 124-15 uh, at 9 Tavern Road in Groton. And then Shirley ZBA had a legal notice of public hearing on March 1st, 2021 for a variance in connection with protective zoning bylaw 3.2.2B. Property location is 98 Benjamin Road in Shirley. Um, and then notices from Townsend. Um, it was an email uh, from um, the executive um, assistant to the town administrator. It says, please share with your boards, committees, commissions at the meeting of the Board of Selectmen held on February 2nd, 2021. The board voted to open the annual and special town meeting warrant on February 3rd, 2021. Warrant articles will be accepted for the annual town meeting warrant until March 1st, 2021. Warrant articles will be accepted for the special town meeting warrant until April 2nd, 2021. If you have any concerns, please feel free to contact contact this office. And that's all I have. Beth, thank you so much for doing this for me. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, all right, any questions? If not, let's move on to 4.2 DLTA assistant request for service delivery application. Uh, yeah, that was already discussed. So yes, I've gone twice, yeah. Okay. All right, um, our next meeting is on the 22nd. And with that, can I have a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. I second that. All right, Carol, how do you vote? Yes. Carol N. Yes. Chad. Yes. Lori. Yes. Lance is yes. All right, thank you, everyone. And thank everyone thank for your hard work. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night.